Hello and welcome. This is Roger Hutchins uh, coming to you by the uh, instruction of the Lord to speak to you tonight a little bit. We want to continue. I uh, hope you tuned in last night, but if you didn't, uh, go back and catch that on uh, that was uh, aired last week on uh, Thursday night. And uh, we want to share with you some more about uh, why does Christ appear? And as we get into the Word tonight, uh, you know, there's something that happens whenever the Word of God begins to come forth. And I feel like I need to give you some instruction because, you know, whenever you begin to speak the Word of the Lord, uh, supernatural, you set the stage for supernatural things to happen. So as we gather tonight, as we, we get our notebooks and our Bibles and we begin to bring it together, uh, we want to be able to experience the supernatural. How do we do that? Well, you know, we, we think sometimes uh, not just the supernatural, you know, the supernatural is when God puts his super on our natural, somebody said, uh, but you know, not just natural phenomenon and all the things that we see that that happen that that can be influenced by the world and can be influenced by the the mind and and all those things. But we're talking about the reality of who God is. That's what we're looking for tonight. Uh, before we start, I want to pray and and I believe that God wants to speak to somebody tonight as we get into the Word of God as we begin to open our Bibles. Uh, we're going to get back, back into the same scripture we were in last week, uh, and we're going to review that a little bit, and we're going to go on a little bit deeper, uh, because I believe we're in a day whenever God is uh, is revealing himself, and you know, it's hard not to go ahead and preach, but let's pray, uh, because I want you, if you're listening tonight, maybe you just stumbled across this live broadcast, maybe just popped up and you don't even know why, but maybe it's God directing it to you, a message to you, and uh, tonight, if you're not born again, I want to right off the bat invite you uh, to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Uh, the, the scripture says, if you believe in your heart, uh, confess with your mouth, mouth the Lord Jesus, then you're born again. So I want to ask you uh, to do that. I want to ask you uh, to, as we pray, uh, if you're listening tonight and you're going through something in your physical body, uh, the scripture says uh, that by his stripes we are healed. And tonight as we pray, and I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith tonight is going to save the sick. So tonight I want you to pray. I want you to believe God uh, no matter what's going on in your life. Maybe you're oppressed. Maybe you're depressed. Uh, that's demon activity. And, and we have authority over those things. And so tonight as we pray, we're going to take authority over those things. So right now let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for that one tonight. <clears throat> that doesn't know you. I pray for that one, God. Tonight, that just uh, needs you in their life, God, that they just open their mouth and say, Lord, come into my heart. I believe in you. I confess you with my mouth. And Father, I thank you for that, God. I pray for that one that may need healing tonight, God. Uh, Lord, you said we could pray the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith would save the sick. And Father, in the name of Jesus, rebuke the devourer uh, <clears throat> for their sake, the, the devourer being sickness or disease. And we thank you, Lord, we take authority over that. We thank you, Lord, that we take authority over uh, oppression and depression, God, that uh, those demon activities that try to come against, maybe they're a church member, maybe they're, uh, they're even somebody that's had a real uh, born-again experience with God, but yet because of cir circumstances, uh, they're going through something. But Father, in the name of Jesus, right here on this night, God, I ask you, Lord, that you touch them, that you rebuke the powers of Satan uh, from, from them. And in Jesus' name, I ask you, Lord, uh, that you do it. And God, I thank you, Lord, for what their obedience to you or your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, <clears throat> let's go back into the word now. And let me, I want to go back to our anchor scripture for these uh, lessons. I don't know how, how many there will be, four or five. Uh, of these lessons, but uh, I want to go back into our anchor scripture in Colossians, the third chapter, and beginning with uh, with the fourth verse, the first verse. Uh, it says, "If ye have been risen with Christ, in the court of the scripture, we have. When He raised, we raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God." 
set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Now that's instructions to us. Set our affections, our emotions, our desires on, on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with God in Christ. When Christ, now here's our, our real anchor scripture in the fourth verse. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, and we're, we're looking specifically at that word appear, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Now, <clears throat> his life is your life. When he raised, you raised. But there are some things, uh, many times we read that, especially if we've been in, in uh, church services long, uh, and we, it says when he appears, we tend to put that out in the future. But this is not, he's not talking about the futuristic event of, of his appearing now or his coming or whatever uh, you want to put it, but he's talking about his appearing. Or the word uh, appearing here, let me, let me read a little bit, and I'm studying... Uh, my research has been out of the Blue Letter, Letter Bible. And uh, the, if you go there and you do the research, you'll find the same things that I've found. Uh, that goes back to the Strongs and those things like that. Uh, but it says, uh, to make manifest. When, when it talks about appearing, that word means to make manifest or visible or known what has been hidden or unknown to manifest whether by words or deeds or by any other way. So whenever we say the word appear, we're not just saying uh, that, that you know, Christ is all of a sudden appearing, uh, but it means he's making manifest himself. Uh, one thing I shared with you last week, and I want to, uh, this is very important to me because uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me uh, when I heard this scripture, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, somebody else said it was being read. I think it might have been on the, on uh, some of the Bible programs, reading it out loud. And uh, when I heard that, I heard the Holy Spirit say, "Why do I appear?" And I said, "Well, I'm not sure, Lord." And I began to listen, and the Lord began to tell me uh, that He appears to us just like He appeared. And I shared this with you last week too, just like He appeared in the cool of the day in the garden with. Adam. He wanted to show him uh, wh who he was. And see, we are made in the likeness and the image of God. So he comes to us to show us who we are. Now, I'm not going to spend much time back in, in uh, Genesis, but read Genesis 1 and 2 and watch the interaction with God. How that God began to interact with, with Adam to show him and instruct him of who he is, the God-man in the earth. At that time, he was the God-man uh, in the earth because he was created in the image of God. Now, uh, uh, that is a little bit different than Jesus because Jesus came and Jesus was the only begotten Son of God. Uh, he came into the world by birth. He came into the world uh, as God in the flesh and <clears throat> was by birth uh, entered into the earth. Now, let's move on a little bit because I want to read in Romans, in Romans the 16th chapter, uh, he says, but now is made manifest. The word manifest here is the same word uh, the same Greek word as uh, appear is in in Colossians um, in Colossians three and four. So, uh, but now is made manifest. Or we could read it if we use the same rule that was used in Colossians. We could use it. Uh, but now appears, and by the scripture of of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith. And the reason he uses all nations there is he's not limiting what he did here in the new covenant. He's not limiting that just to the Jewish nation. 
Uh, but he's saying to all nations, ever the whole world is now uh, seeing or, or God's manifest to all of us. Uh, whether we're Jew or Greek, bond or free, he's manifest to all of us. So uh, it's made manifest to us. The, script, the scriptures that are of old is now being made manifest to us. Somebody said, well, those were just written for, for the Jews because the Jews were under the law. But whenever Jesus came, he broke down that middle wall of petition and he began to bring us into that covenant, the new covenant, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the blood covenant that Christ made. Uh, and uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 5 says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who will bring to light the hidden things of, di of darkness and will make manifest there the word is again it's the same Greek word will make manifest the counsels of the heart so we see that whenever he appears he appears to make manifest the counsels of the heart to make manifest uh, what's in our heart. Have you ever been? Uh, those of you that have been uh, in worship and in in in, uh, <clears throat> in services where the presence of God was so uh, real, so tangible. Uh, you know, I remember back in my early years, we called it conviction. You know. Uh, they got under conviction and God drew them to the altar or whatever. And, you know, whenever the presence of God is manifest, it makes, brings into light, good and bad, the things of the heart. So, uh, tonight as you listen here, there may be some things right now that, that God appears right where you are. He's appearing in this room. You know, I, I, I've been through those times whenever God would, God would come in in His appearance, uh, His His manifestation, His uh, the glory that w was there. Uh, and, and back just a moment when I talk about that glory, it, it's kind of like the glory that must have been there whenever uh, God came together with Adam. There was a glory. There was a uh, you know. Uh, there was a, a, a Shekinah glory, if you will, that, that it was God's presence in the middle of the midst of that garden. And the same thing right here uh, with you and me. You know, although we are flesh and blood, there's a spirit inside of us, and God's uh, and, and that spirit now is where God shows up, and God makes manifest. Uh, I heard somebody say, which made sense the other day, uh, that the heart is a, is a combination uh, of, of the, the uh, soul and the spirit. Uh, and that's true. Whenever there's cooperation between the spirit and the soul, but what makes it God rather than flesh is the, the, the soul is in connection with or in cooperation with, and there's a manifestation of God where? In your heart. There's a manifestation of God in the flesh. Where, do, where does God dwell? Well, somebody said, "Well, he dwells on." We're going to read the scripture in a, in a little bit, or maybe in this in this lesson. But uh, where God, uh, it's Christ in us, who is the hope of glory. Uh, but but God manifests Himself in the flesh, and uh, as He manifests Himself uh, in this flesh, uh, then then we know uh, that it's. What, what the secrets of the heart are. You know, I have to say, in being before the Lord right now, and I, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to in any way give the impression that, I'm, uh, that I think more of myself, but I want to tell you what, I've learned that God's judged my heart, and if God's judged my heart, let God judge your heart, because I want to tell you what, if He judges your heart, it's not because He wants to bring condemnation. Even Jesus himself said he came down the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, Christian, I want you to, uh, I, I want you just to, to invite his presence. Appear. Now, that scares some people because we think some, you know, some figure is going to appear now and, 
and, and scare us half half out of our wits. But uh, but uh, you know, there's something even more tangible than him appearing in in a, a tangible physical body. Now that's uh, you know, thank God he can do that and has done that in the past. And I've I've seen angelic beings that appeared and and might even have been the Lord. I don't uh, I don't know for sure, but but I'm gonna tell you what I do know. He appears, and when he appears, uh, he begins to to bring to light the things that are in the heart. Uh, thank you, Father. So, to judge uh, uh, the First Corinthians five, uh, four and verse five says, "Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes." Now there it is again: the Lord comes, or until the Lord manifests. Uh, you know, say, "Well, I, I can't wait to see Him." Well, don't wait to see Him. Right now, let Him manifest in your presence let him manifest where you are and as he manifests where you are then guess what he doesn't manifest to bring condemnation or to judge you according to the flesh but he makes he makes manifestation so he can begin to reveal the secrets of the heart as we just read until the lord come who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart and then shall every man have praise watch what he said whenever he makes manifest the counsels of the heart then every man may, will make praise of God I want to say come and make manifest the secrets of the heart make manifest what's in my heart see because whenever he's the light if he comes to your heart darkness has to flee if he comes into your heart, then every uh, every every foul spirit, every all the darkness, all that stuff has to flee. Uh, so, uh, amen, <laughs> amen. How many want the darkness to flee? Do you want the darkness to flee? Just lift your hands and say, "God, make yourself manifest in my heart, so all darkness is gone. Everything flees out of my heart, and you are appearing. I I want him to appear so bad." You know, and and I know traditional teaching, and I'm not trying to come against him. I said, don't don't get offended in me. He he's the God that that is and was and is to come. Do I believe he is to come? Sure, but I believe he is come right now uh, in the flesh, and he's come in the flesh to reveal the secrets of the heart and to make manifest uh, actually who we are in him. Now go to Second Corinthians, the second chapter, uh, and let's look at. Uh, Look at what it says there. Now, let me change papers because I've got uh, my notes and all this going on here. And uh, Amen. So, in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, in the third verse, it says, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink but by by the spirit of the living god on tables of stone by the but the fleshly tables of the heart see god's not writing on tables of stone anymore but but what watch what he said the word manifestly declared is the same meaning as in colossians where he used the word appear so god appears or god comes to manifestly declare uh, that you are the, the epistles of Christ uh, were written in your heart to be known of all men. Uh, so in 1 John 1 and verse 2 says, For the life was manifested. There the word is, is again, manifested. Same as appeared. The word appeared and we have seen it and bear witness and showed unto you that etern that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested or appeared unto us. Now, we have to see now that at His appearing, and let's go back and just look a moment. When He came and He appeared in the earth, Emmanuel, God with us. When He came and appeared in the earth, then... Uh, he manifested the Father. 
Uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was the, not anything made that's made. This is the first chapter of John. Uh, down about the 14th verse he said, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld or we saw His glory. He's come to reveal His glory. He came the, he came, uh, the first time. He came... Uh, and, and even even that first time, there were different levels of his appearing. Remember whenever he asked uh, Peter, he said, Who do men say that I am, uh, I the Son of Man am? And uh, Peter, that Peter said, Well, some of them say you're John the Baptist, some of them say you're Elias or one of the prophets. And Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? So here Jesus is revealing himself. Uh, uh, Peter speaks up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And whenever he said that, uh, then Jesus replied to him, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. See, so at that appearing, uh, he appeared to Peter in a higher dimension than just the babe in a manger, in a higher dimension than just the preacher he had been following. Uh, but he appeared to him uh, as God in the flesh, actually, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father. So, 1 John 1 and 2 again, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. Now, if, if John saw it, then he shared it with us. Can I tell you, God's presence, God's appearing, uh, and he's appearing right here on this program right now. He's appearing right now uh, on this live broadcast through the anointing of God and speaking through this prophet to tell you uh, that, that he has appeared to bring us into a revelation, into a knowledge of who he is. Just like he did with Peter on that day, whenever he began to talk with Peter, can I tell you, he was appearing to Peter on that day to reveal uh, to Peter who he was. Thou art the Christ and the Son of the living God. And then he turned around and said to Peter, uh, uh, from now on you're, you're, you're called Peter. He wasn't called Peter before that. From now on you're Peter or Little Rock. Uh, and, and upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. See, so that revealing caused Peter to move into another higher relationship with God. That's what God desires to do, is to bring us into a higher relationship uh, with, uh, with Him and to reveal to us who we are. See, the Word of God, and I said this before on last program, uh, the Word of God is there to reveal not only Him, but to reveal who we are. That's the reason a lot of people have an identity crisis in Christ Jesus uh, because they don't want to identify. They, they don't identify with who He is first and then they don't spend that time in His presence. When we spend, spend time in His presence, He reveals to us who we are and we have no more identity crisis. All right, now 1 John 4 and verse... Um, Okay, 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now say that. Now are we the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet manifest. It says appear. It does not yet appear. The same word uh, as we read back uh, about his appearing. It, it does not yet appear or it's not yet manifest what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear or manifest, same word as in Colossians, we shall be like him. Now, isn't that what we're... I remember an old song way back in my earlier uh, teenage years. Uh, to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. That's all I ask is to be like him. See, and we sang that, and I felt it when back when we sang it, just as a uh, a young teenager, and 
and as a young man we, we would sing that because that was our desires to be like him uh, but how does that happen whenever he's manifest among us whenever he appears among us uh, then he begins to show us who we are and he begins to reveal uh, let me let me say it like this he begins to reveal himself okay then we look and see himself but where does he reveal himself he reveals himself where he's taken up his abode if you If I abide in you and your words abide, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and shall be done. So there's an abiding uh, of his presence that's here all the time. All right? Now, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for his appearing. We're not looking, and <laughs> we're not looking for him up in the sky we're looking for him to appear where did he appear uh, on the day of Pentecost he appeared right there amongst those believers that were gathered in one mind and one accord he appeared uh, actually to many uh, people uh, 3,000 people were saved and uh, that day when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is now I know we sometimes put that out in the future. Many people put it out in the future and think, well, I'm going to see him uh, when I enter those pearly gates. Well, I, I believe we can see him right now. Thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. So I believe we, he can appear right here uh, before us right now. So I want you just to open up your spirit and allow him to begin to, to uh, appear unto you. Allow him. He, one of the definitions of what we read uh, before is, is to make known uh, known by teaching see his spirit who is the real teacher I'm teaching tonight tonight because uh, the Holy Spirit has moved on me to bring these uh, words to you but but I've surrendered uh, all the teaching ability to the Holy Spirit because uh, whenever he appears the Holy Spirit appears then he will lead you and guide you into all truth see so there's the real teacher let Holy Spirit come in that room in right where you are tonight and allow you to hear the voice of the living God, okay? Then shall we be like Him, for we shall see Him or understand Him as He is. We, he's being made known to us because He's the teacher that's teaching us, revealing Himself, manifesting Himself that we can know Him. Now, last scripture for this time, 1 John 9, uh, 4 and verse 9 it says in this was manifested or the coming or he came in this of uh, the love of God toward us because that God sent not uh, his son sent his only begotten son into the world that the world through him uh, the world might live through him let me read that again it was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that he might that we might live through him now he's appearing right here tonight right here on this Facebook live or, or, or YouTube or Twitter or wherever you found it he's appearing through this word and through his presence uh, there in your life to make known that we might live in him. When? Somebody said, well, I know I'm going to live in him when I die, when I go to heaven sometime after a while. But I, I, I want to tell you, he wants you to live in him right here in this earthly realm, right here in this place. Uh, we're going to pray again before I go off. And... I just want to ask him to appear. Will, 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 you, will you ask him to appear right where you are? I want him so desperately uh, to appear. And he does. And he is. Appearing manifestly to reveal himself and to bring us to a knowledge 
of the life that we have in him. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this uh, broadcast today, for those that have tuned in. And I ask you, Father, as we uh, go off the air, God, I thank you, Lord, we want you, your presence to appear unto this people. God, and, and God, it wouldn't surprise me if you just uh, just did it tangibly and openly and visibly just to show somebody, uh, God, how close you are. And Father, I thank you, Lord, your appearance comes uh, by the Spirit unto us. And I thank you, Lord, I, I sense and feel that appearing right now. I feel that Spirit of God right in this room making manifest uh, the things that are in our heart. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you live and dwell in, and have, we live and dwell and have our being in you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, for those that call on your name to be saved tonight. We thank you, Lord, for those that have called on your name that, that received healing. God, for those that are delivered from, from depression and, and oppression. And God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that your touch is on every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, and I thank you for tuning in tonight. I want to make mention of one thing real quickly as we go off. We're getting ready to go uh, actually to two mission trips. We leave uh, the 16th of, of, uh, of May to go to Panama, and then we live uh, in August. We're going to go uh, to Peru mission trips. Uh, in, in, in Panama, in that Central American country, uh, the Peru trip is going to be in the, on the Amazon, teaching and training pastors, ministering to the pe people, getting people saved and healed and delivered. And uh, I want you to be a part of it. Send an offering if you can. Uh, the address will be on your screen or you can go on the Facebook page right down to our PayPal account and you can... Uh, do that. Uh, the reason I ask is I need your help. We can't do it all by ourselves, uh, but we ask you to stand with us and uh, be a part of what we're doing. And we're a little bit, a little bit over, but God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next time.